Shalom, shalom, peace, peace. This is Jadiel from the Fourth Angels Learning Center. Thank you guys for tuning in to our part two of our understanding the sanctuary, entering into the sanctuary, uh, slash the mind of Yah. Um, part one, we went over the entrance. We looked at the entrance, the gate, which we know the gate is Messiah, and that the Messiah is also the gate into the mind of Yah. Uh, we also saw that man has a gate and a door, and that uh, Revelation three twenty tells us that Yah, that Messiah is knocking at our door to enter in to our temple as well. So he's looking at these two elements, showing that Yah is trying to infuse his mind with ours, and that's why we become the temple. That's why we are the temple, so he can dwell in the midst of us. We looked at the altar of sacrifice, and we saw <laughs> how the altar of sacrifice is the element in which the Messiah's sacrifice is presented to us. It is the primary element in the entering into that uh, the sanctuary. It is also the primary transformation that we go through when we allow Messiah into our mind we now become a living sacrifice as well. And we offer up spiritual sacrifices as mentioned in um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. So then we saw the labor, the labor of it being very important as the washing our sins away, the washing of the water of the word, Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, and cleanse your hands, ye sinners, James 4, 8, which David also shows us how shall a man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the water of the word or to the word of Psalms 119 verse 9. So in entering into the gate, you've allowed Messiah to bring us into the mind of Yah to the focal aspect of the, uh, which is the sacrifices and the cleansing of our sins. Now we're going to enter into the more intimate um, element of, of the mind of Yah. Hopefully, it should allow our minds to, to actually go deeper and connect to, to his mind as well. So before we get started, I want to remind everybody, if we've been a blessing to you at this ministry, that you consider supporting us at uh, 4ALC.com. Uh, you can also support us at Cash App, uh, which is dollar sign. Uh, 4 ALC bless or 4 ALC B L E S S. Please, we appreciate all the sharing. We appreciate all the prayers. And please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Please don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell so you can be updated on new videos and new series and new topics. All right. <clears throat> so, where do we end off? We ended off at the gate, the tabernacle. The Tabernacle of Congregation. I'm going to rewind it back a little bit. We're going to see, we're going to go for a little walk. Let's go for a little walk through the gate, entering into the mind of Yah. First thing that we see is the sacrifice of Messiah on the altar. We be, By beholding, we become changed. We also become a living sacrifice, just as Messiah was. And we also are washed simultaneously by the water of the word, by receiving the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. He washes us with the word. And we turn from our sins when we recognize that our lifestyle is contrary to the word. When he washes us, we become eligible, so to speak. Eligible to enter into the intimate aspect of Messiah, of Yah. Ready? Let's go in. So go through the tabernacle of congregation, and we see these three elements here. We have the altar of incense right before the veil of the most holy. We have the candlesticks, and we have the table of showbread. Wherever the, the walk takes us, we're going to break down that first. 
the table of showbread right here. Let's take a look at it. Now, in entering into these things, you get into the more heavier, heavy duty aspects. Everything is made of gold inside. Now, what we saw outside the tabernacle was that everything was made of brass. Uh, so when we get inside, everything is made of gold. The walls is gold, the floors, precious stones. Every element in here is gold, covered with gold. Is is acacia wood or what the King James referred to as shittim wood. So let's look at what this is. Let, let's, let's check this out. This is the table of showbread. The table of showbread. And what does that really mean, table of showbread, shoebread? Let's go to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus 25, looking at verse 23 to 20, let's just read from 23 to 30. It says, you shall make a table of shittim wood or acacia wood. Two cubits shall be the length of it and a cubit of breadth thereof and a cubit and a half of height thereof. You guys do your research as to the elements. Pretty interesting. You shall overlay it with pure gold and make unto it a crown of gold round about it. You shall make it a border of a hand breadth round about, and you shall make a golden crown to the border round about it. Right? Let's, uh, let's go down to verse 29. To 30, it says, and you shall make the dishes thereof and the spoons thereof and the covers thereof and the bowls thereof to cover all of it. Pure gold, you shall make it. And it says, you shall set upon the table of showbread before me always. This word showbread is the Hebrew word, which means presence. I believe it's panim. Let's take a look. Lechem which means bread, panim, H6440, panim, which means the face or the presence or in front of, right? So very important. So the bread was put out always in front of them. How much bread was usually put out? Let's look at the picture of it. The video shows. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six loaves here, six loaves here. Collectively is 12 loaves of bread. And there was a, a 12 loaves of bread that was put out every, every um, Shabbat. So every Shabbat, there was a new fresh batch of 12 loaves of bread on this golden table and then you see the golden crown right here going around it and then you see the bowls and the cups and the basins right there okay so how does this correlate how does the table with 12 loaves of bread correlate with um messiah so one we went from outside to inside, we see that now it's called the table of showbread, which is uh, translated the bread of presence. Now we're in his presence, but then it has 12 loaves of bread. So what would the bread represent? The bread, of course, I know you guys know the primary understanding of the bread represents who? I know you guys know Messiah, John chapter six, Looking at verse 47 to 51, look at what it says. It says, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh, 
and I will give for the life that I, which I will give for the life of the world. So he is the bread of life. The bread obviously represents Messiah. But remember, we're in a more intimate realm. We're no longer out in the courtyard beginning our relationship with us, with Yah, entering into the mind of Yah. We are now in a more intimate setting, in a closed off intimate setting with Yah. So the bread also has 12 loaves. We know that the 12 loaves represents the 12 tribes, which re represents all of Yah's people. Right. All of Yah's people is represented in the 12 tribes. So why is it the bread manifested as 12? Why would the 12 tribes be the bread, be bread, if Messiah is the bread? Well, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 to see how Messiah allowing us to, to be intimate with him. How does that affect us? as 12 tribes. Look at what it says. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. It says, the cup of blessing, which we bless, is it not the partaking of the body of, of the blood of Messiah? The bread that we break, is it not partaking in the body of Messiah? For we being many are one, what does it say? Bread. We by partaking in Messiah, as he mentioned in John chapter 6, he that eats this bread will have everlasting life. If we partake in that bread, we being many are one bread. We become one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. So this is why inside an intimate realm, the holy place, right? Tabernacle of congregation is called. Now, when we enter into that intimate setting, we become one with Messiah. So he is the bread, but so are the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes become one bread because we partake of that one bread. You see that? So it's very important that we understand why is the bread in the presence of Yah. We are in the presence of Yah because we are one with Messiah. Remember, when the gate, Revelation 3.20, he knocked at the door and we allowed him in to our temple. Now that he is in us and we sup with him, we become one bread. Now that we are one bread, it is referred to as the lechem panim, which means the bread of Yah's presence. We are now able to move in his presence. There's a few scriptures that actually indicate that in our, in our lifestyle, in our lifestyle of faith. Let's look at the book of Hebrews. Um, I believe it's chapter 10. Uh, let me see. Here we go. Look at this, verse 19. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yahushua. So we enter into the holiest. You see that? So let's continue to look at the intimate aspects. We become one with Messiah. He is the bread. We partake in him. And that's what makes us the bread of his presence as well. Only if you partake in them. Not, there's no aspect, 12 tribes, you can just automatically know. You have to go through this steps. The steps of the relationship is the sanctuary. You have to go through the steps in order to become one in that intimate place. So, so far, we see clearly that we are one bread with Messiah. And this is why the bread, there's 12 loaves of bread to represent the oneness between Yah's people and the Messiah being together in the presence of Yah, because this is the table of his presence. So this table represents the presence of Yah, and the bread represents the Messiah and his people together in Yah's presence. The Messiah brings us boldly into the holiest of holies, into the presence of Yah. Let's continue to walk through the sanctuary. 
So we acknowledge the bread had to be put out every Shabbat by the priests. We are also bread where people partake in the knowledge that we give. Scriptures teach us that his word is also referred to as bread. His word is also referred to as the bread. Uh, bread. Man shall not live by bread alone. So when people partake in Messiah and partake in us, it's because we are executing the word. We are delivering the word and people are partaking of the bread. Now, we see this golden candlestick with seven, with six branches coming out of the candle, initial candlestick in the middle. Let's see if we could go back to look right in front of it. There we go. We see these, this is the candlesticks. We have the one primary one, and then we have the three coming out each side with the seven candlesticks, the bowl, the almond, the almond bud at the top. Let's look at the verses. Let's look at the scripture to see what does it say about the candlestick. Exodus chapter the 25. Exodus chapter 25. Looking at verse 31 to 37, the golden lampstand. Verse 31, it says, you shall make a candlestick of pure gold, be in work, shall the candlestick be made. I, I, I want us to emphasize on this as well. Be in work. That means that it goes through pressure. It, it goes through a hammering. It goes through fire in order to be molded to reflect what it what Yah wants it to reflect. So the pure gold gets purified, beaten. Uh, that means that it gets put in the fire and then molded into a shape. And he shaped it after branches and bowls and knobs and flowers, um, you know, of an almond tree. And it says here in verse 32, six branches shall come out the sides of it. Three branches of candlestick on one side, three branches on the candlesticks on the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds, the knob or the, or the bud and a flower in one branch, you know. And so in six branches that come out of the candlestick. In the candlestick shall be four bowls made like almonds and buds and their flowers. Right? Let's continue. Verse 35. There shall be a knot under two branches of the same and a knot under the other two branches of the same and a knot under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. I'm not sure if that's we're going to see that, um, but it's there. Their knobs and their branches shall be the same. All of it shall be of beaten work or heated up, purified, and molded of pure gold. And you shall make seven lamps on it. They shall light the lamps thereof, that there may be give light in front of it. So this is the light of the sanctuary. This is what allows the light um to shine and look at what it says in verse 40 look that you make after their pattern which was showed to you in the mount so this is again yeah is emphasizing on make sure you do it exactly the way that i am have it in my mind the way that i gave it to you i want you to also show it so the light is supposed to bring light let's look at a few more verses real quick um Let's go to Exodus. No, let's go to John chapter six. No, no, sorry about that. Let's go to John chapter one. Talks about the light. It's supposed to give light. What, what lit up the, the candlesticks was olive oil. So they utilized olive oil in order to um, shine the light. So they lit the olive oil in the candlestick. So the candlestick with the olive oil, which of course in scripture, olive oil represents this, the Ruach, the spirit, gives off light, gives off light. So uh, the lamp, the light of the lamps thereof. So let's go to John to see how this correlates with Messiah. John chapter one, verse nine, it says, that was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. He's referring to Messiah. 
right? Since he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world did not know him. So this light, the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world is referring to Messiah. Let's look at John chapter eight. John chapter eight, let me see, is it verse 12? Yes. Verse 12, it says, then spake Yahushua again to them saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. Remember, this is the intimate setting in the, the tabernacle congregation or the holy place. This is the intimate place in which we become one. So he's like, if you are with me, you will not be in darkness. I will be the light in you. It says, but shall have light, the light of life. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You will have the light. So how does this connect with us? How do we reflect that oneness with him? Well, if he is the light, he's the candlestick. We also ought to be the light because we have his light, just like the bread. We are the bread because we partake in the bread. Matthew chapter 5, looking at verse 14 to 16, look at what it says. You, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be, cannot be hid, All right? So it says, neither do men light a candle, put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light shine so before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Praise Yah. So what is the light that's in us? What does he put in us to make us the light? Besides his light, of course. But scripture also calls, let's go to Psalms 119, verse 105. Everybody's familiar with this. 119 verse 105. And it says here, your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. So Yah is the light of the world. Matter of fact, it says that Yahuwah, Yah, is the father of lights. Let me see if I can find that. That he is the father of lights. James chapter 1, verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variable this, neither shadow of turning. So let's look at some correlations showing the oneness. It said, it showed us that we are the bread, right? In scripture, we are the bread, the 12 tribes, the bread. Now the candlestick is the light and it, scripture clearly says that we are the light also. But I wanna show a verse, I believe it's in Revelation chapter one. It's, uh, let me see, look at what it says here. I'm trying to see if I could find it, there we go. There was a depiction of Messiah being, and there we go, here we go. Look at this. Revelation chapter 1, verse 12. It says, I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Seven golden candlesticks. So there's the candlestick that's in the tabernacle that we just saw. That's one golden candlestick. So there's seven of these. And it says that in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man. So Messiah is in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He's in the midst of them. Remember, let them build me a sanctuary that I may be in the midst of them. Now look at what it says at the end about the candlesticks in Revelation 120. It says, the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand are the seven and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels or the messengers of the seven assemblies. And the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven called out assemblies. So not only is 
the candlesticks are representation of Yah lighting up the world, lighting up his people. But the candlesticks in Revelation 120 is a representation of us, the called out ones. So it's very clear of the connection, the correlation between Yah, us entering into the mind of Yah, getting more intimate. So first we see uh, uh, us being introduced at the gate to the sacrifice and the washing. And that transformed us into a living sacrifice. And we offered up sacrifices. Then we get inside and then we partake. As we partake with Messiah, him being the bread of life, we became bread and the body of Messiah. And as the Messiah was the light, we also became the candlestick. So the beaten gold part, the refined part. Look at what it says here. It's just so many elements. I, I don't want to go too much. It will be, it'll be too long if I went through too much. So I just want to give a quick synopsis of the, of the sanctuary, show how it correlates with us and Yah's mind becoming one through Messiah. And I believe that in our further study, we'll be able to do this. Look at this. Revelation 3.18, right before it, Right after it talks about the golden candlestick, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Why is gold tried in the fire so important? Gold tried in the fire is so important because when you put gold in the fire, then you can mold it. You can beat it. Like it says about the candlestick, beat in gold. So when you put it in the fire, you can mold it to however you want it to be. And Yah is asking us to buy gold tried in the fire. He wants us to have our faith tried and purified so he can mold us into the people that he wants us to be so we can be the lights. So we can be the lights that he's calling us to be. So we can reflect the same image as his son. So as we get, this is getting more, as we get more intimate, he is the light of the world. We are the light of the world. This is what was in Yah's mind not only Messiah to be the light, but for us to also partake in the light and become one with the light, just like we became one with the bread. Now, as we walk and turn, we approach the altar of incense. We approach the altar of incense, which is also covered with gold. And we're going to stop here. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this study, please look forward to the final study, part three of our sanctuary series, going into the most holy. Um, we see our, our, our uni un unity, not only the unity with each other, but the unity between us and Yah. 12 tribes, the 12 loaves of bread is bread. And the reason why the 12 loaves is bread is because we are partakers of the bread of life. And we now are on the referred to as the bread of his presence, the bread of his presence. Then we have the seven um, candles, the lights, which is the light of the tabernacle, the light of the world, which he tells us in Matthew 5, that you are the light of the world and that you ought to let your light shine. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, it says that the called out ones, the assemblies, the church is the candlesticks and that the Messiah is in the midst of the candlesticks. He asks us to buy gold tried in the fire because only by purifying the gold in fire is the fire is the gold able to be molded into the shape that it wants it to reflect, that Yah wants it to reflect. So praise Yah for this intimate, we enter into that intimate mind space that Yah has. And now in our mind space, Yah becomes involved and intimate in our minds. We are now engulfed in his spirit, we are now able to reflect his image 
And we are now able to glorify him on this earth, to lighten the earth with his glory. Praise Yah for this opportunity uh, that he is giving to us. And, um, you know, praise Yah. Look forward to the next one. Uh, join us soon. Yah bless you guys. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Thank you guys for joining our study today. I hope that it was edifying. And if you want to support this ministry, you can support us on 4ALC.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube page. Click the like button and the notification bell. I hope to see you guys on the next study. Shalom, guys.